Hey guys, I'm Steve Tan, and uh, today I want to talk about my uh, recent project. It's called Fuzzy Moving Average System with the uh, Generic Algorithm Optimization for Trading Crude Palm Oil Futures. Uh, so just uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, that's my page. If you want to connect with me, please go there. And uh, for, this, for this project, actually, all the uh, source code and everything related to this project on the uh, so that's that's the link right there and yeah uh, the, the the project is actually based on this uh, paper called quantified moving average strategy of crude oil futures market based on fuzzy logic rules and generic algorithm and uh, it's done by uh, uh the, this team of uh, uh jazzy liu hai zhong uh, liu yun and uh, qing guan so we are, we're basing the uh the strategy entirely on this paper and uh, the, the goal of this paper is basically to become the uh, next billionaire. So that, that, that was the, uh, the promise of doing this project. So let's see how far we get uh, towards that goal by the end of this project. So here's the uh, start of the overview. Uh, for, for the data, we are actually using the uh, crude palm oil futures uh, historical data set. Uh, it's, uh, it's from uh, 3rd of January 2011 to 30th of December 2016 and uh, is a per minute trading volume and prices for 37 crude palm oil futures for the entire six years. So for this data set, what we have done is we divided it into a training and a testing data set. So for the training, we're using the period from 2011 January 3rd to uh, 24, 2014 January 1st. And for the testing period, we are using the, uh, the period from 2014 January 2nd onwards to 2016 December 30th. And if you actually look at the uh, the, the trend of the uh, uh, well, this is uh, the plot of the uh, training data. You can look at the uh, the trend of it. It seems to be a little bit towards down, going uh, downtrend and eventually a little bit on the sideways towards the end. So that is on the data that we're using for the uh, high level system diagram of uh, what we how we implement the system is is basically primarily based on the uh, the excellent back trader platform which is uh, in python and uh, for the for the fuzzy logic rules we're using a library called scikit fuzzy as for the ga part of the uh, library we are actually just writing some python custom functions to uh, handle the uh, the ga part and uh, this is the uh, flowchart of uh, how we implemented the system, basically. So uh, it's divided into a few parts. First of all, we, we load the, uh, the training data. And then using the training data, we are building up uh, the, the fuzzy extents for each of the uh, moving average types. So uh, that, that's because the uh, fuzzy logic rule is applied uh, throughout the, the whole uh, trading, hence we thought it would be a good idea to uh, cache all of this uh, into a uh, cache external files and then we can load it every time we need to run it later on. So that's what we did on the first run and after that we, we, gener we generate a random initial population and we run the whole trading process. So the, the, the trading process involves uh, using the uh, moving average crossover to get the signal to buy and sell and uh, we use the fuzzy logic to determine the lot size and uh, yeah, and then obviously we we'll trade using this uh, uh the, the signals and the lot sizing, and at the end of the trade run we will get the uh, the fitness function which is the uh, return on rate, return on rate of return sorry, uh, which is basically the uh, the the result from the the trading uh, the, the profit basically the moolah, and then uh after completing the first one we will generate a new random population. And uh, this is where the GA part comes in. We'll, use, we'll try to use GA to randomize the fuzzy rule to find a, a even better population that can basically make more money. And then of course, we will run the, the trading process again. And uh, we'll check to see if the, uh, the best individual that we get from this new population, is it better than the uh, best individual that we got from the previous initial population? And is this uh, performance improvement better than 5%? If it is, then we'll replace uh, the old population with this uh, new population. Otherwise, we'll just keep the uh, old population and then we check to see if we have completed 50 cycles uh, of this uh, training. Uh, if, if it is, then we uh, do something else. Otherwise, we go back and then we continue with this uh, looping. 
And once we have completed the 50 cycles, we'll use the uh, best individual from that final population and uh, test it with the uh, testing data and run the uh, trading process again. And the uh, final performance, uh, the profit is or loss will be the, uh, the, the final uh, data that we get, a final result that we get, yeah. So let's move into the uh, meat of the paper, uh, uh, which uh, is called F MAS, which stands for Fuzzy Moving Average Strategy. And uh, the, how the, the strategy is derived is basically based on uh, creating an individual with 10 rules. And the, uh, which, uh, each, of this each of these rules consists of uh, a few portions. They consist of the uh, first part is the moving average, which we have four types, which is the uh, simple moving average, the uh, typical price moving average, the, uh, the TMA, and the just adaptive moving average. So, and uh, for the time frame, we have a faster and a slow time frame, consists of all this value. And finally, for the, uh, for the FE part, which is the fuzzy extent, we have the extreme low, very low, low, medium, high, very high, extreme high. What all this means, uh, I'll talk about this in the next few slides. And uh, for the recommended value, we'll generate some uh, random value between negative 1 to 1.0. But uh, we have optimized this a bit by time the recommended value based on the fuzzy extent. So for those fuzzy extent that has the uh, low value, we are using a possible recommended value, a randomly generated uh, recommend value of negative 1 to 0 and for medium it could be from negative 1 to 1 and for those that are from the high to uh, very high it, the recommend value is restricted to 0 to 1 and uh, as you can see here there's uh, 20 there's 10 rules per individual and uh, for the whole population we have 20 individuals per, popula per population so how we are using fuzzy logic uh, in, in this strategy is basically to determine how strong of a signal that we get on the by itself. So obviously based on the crossover, we are able to tell whether it's a buy or sell signal, but what we do not have is the information on how strong is the uh, buy or sell signal. So this is where the uh, fuzzy logic part comes in. So we, uh, what we have done is we, uh, we have plotted the, uh, MA, the moving average difference uh, for a particular uh, moving average type, and we have divided into seven fuzzy extended zone. So how we did that is we uh, set the uh, uh, we we ran the uh, a specific moving average type against the uh, the training data, and now uh, based on the result that we received for the whole period, we plotted into this uh, fuzzy fuzzy extended area. Uh, so for zero, that will be medium. And then for the most positive value, that will be our, our extreme high part and we'll divide it between the range between uh, that value and zero into three equal portions. That's how we get the uh, high, very high and extremely high uh, area. And we're doing the same for the opposite side as well. For the negative one, we just basically take the uh, most negative value that we have received and then uh, take the range between that and zero and then we divide that into the same three uh, equally portion and then we, we we do our fuzzy extent based on that and then uh, that that will be the uh, if part if rule part of the uh, fuzzy logic and for the then rule part of the uh, fuzzy logic we will we will tie that to a recommend value based on the uh, fuzzy extent so for negative one to zero we will use the uh, it will be tied to the uh, fuzzy logic rules from uh, uh, from ne from extremely low to medium, and uh, for those that are from uh, from zero to one, we'll use the uh, from medium to extremely high, and for the medium itself, you can see it covers the whole range. So this is very similar to what we did earlier in that part. So that's how we are using the uh, fuzzy logic rule to determine the uh, strength of the uh, bar itself. So going a little bit deeper into how we're using the uh, the rules and the individual. So uh, as mentioned earlier, we are getting the uh, recommend value and the fuzzy extent from the fuzzy logic part. But uh, for the initial part as well, we will generate each rule with the random fuzzy extent and uh, recommend value. 
So how we derive this uh, rating per rule is we'll, we'll, we'll first of all match the fuzzy extent that we, we, have, uh, we have here, which is based on the randomly generated one uh, for the initial run. Let's say if it's uh, very high, and then uh, we, let's say we get a value of uh, 0 0.5. And then what we'll do is we'll use that and then map it against the fuzzy logic rule to get the, the, the return fuzzy extent from the, the fuzzy logic rule and also the recommend value. If the uh, fuzzy extent does match, then we'll use the, uh, the two recommend value and multiply it to get this final rule. So uh, for all the other rules that you see that do not have a value, that's because the uh, fuzzy extent doesn't match, hence there's no value. And the negative ones are obviously the, the ones that are, are in the, the low part of the uh, fuzzy extent. So finally, for a particular individual, we will we'll, we'll use the average of, the, uh, of all the uh, recommend value to get the, uh, the strength of the, the, the bar itself. So that's where we get this from. So, so that covers the uh, fuzzy logic part. The, the next part is the uh, genetic algorithm. How we're using it in this paper is where we're using it to uh, optimize the uh, population and the best individual. So we, we, we start that, as you can see, for every population, there's 20 individuals. So we have some uh, uh, strategy in this paper on how to select the, uh, or maintain the individual for the new population. So the, the main part of it is using the roulette view selection which basically will map all the, uh, the, the return, rate of return for each individual as, uh, as, a, as a roulette wheel. So from this, you can see that the, the individual that has the, the better rate of return will have a, a higher chance of being selected again for the next population. So that's what we're using the uh, roulette wheel selection for. And uh, the, the crossover part is is used on the uh, selection to to mix up the the the, the random part of the uh, the population to give it uh, a higher chance of finding the uh, the global optima of the uh, of the population. We're using crossover rate of zero point seven to and then once the uh, individual that uh, has uh, has been selected, we will use uh, we will randomly select a point. Uh, from the rules, and then we will, and what happens is we will sort all the rules uh, that from that point onwards. So we can see from here onwards, from the six rules, we will sort all those. And then uh, besides the crossover, we are also using mutation. So there's two uh, types of mutation that we will do in uh, in this paper. One is a uh, is very similar to a crossover. So between two uh, and we're using a mutation rate of 0 0.01. So for two individual, uh, two rules that had that uh, is selected based on mutation rate, we'll randomly determine a point within the uh, rules, and then we'll we'll, we'll swap we'll swap the any of the uh, the rule component that's after that point onwards. So also we are treating the uh, the fast and slow moving. Uh, frame uh, time window as a, a single component because otherwise it doesn't make sense and uh, besides the uh, uh, between rules crossover we also have a mutation which uh, if a, a particular part of rule is selected we will randomly generate a, a new value for it so in this case you can see the uh, moving average type is uh, selected for mutation so we we'll randomly generate a new moving average type to be replaced in that particular rule so that, that's what we're doing for the uh, genetic algorithm part. So how do we perform? That's the most important thing. Uh, so after running it for 50 runs, 50 cycles basically, we this is our convergence plot. We are hoping to see something smoother, but uh, I guess the, the GA part is doing its job. So we, we're seeing quite a random swing uh, between the, uh, the, 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 pos the the higher positive part of the uh, uh, rate of return and also those that are slightly losing a little bit of money. So that, that is uh, caused by the GA part. And we can see like the uh, most best performing individual is around 1.38, I guess. And uh, after finishing the, the 50 training cycles, this is the uh, best individual that uh, the, the system has uh, uh, has 
cloud basically. So you can see that the uh, has a lot of uh, negative rating value for the uh, and a lot of lows as well. Uh, extend as a uh, low as well from the, the system, even going up to extreme low of uh, negative one. So, so that the final part is to use this best, best individual that we have received from the, the 50 cycles of training and running it against the uh, testing data. And uh, this is the, the part of the uh, running it against the, the testing data. So what you notice here is that, well, first of all, the, the result wasn't optimal. It, it was a loss of around, around negative 15%, which uh, ended up with a tally of uh, 8.5 million or the uh, 10 million. So the, the question is what happened, right? What happened? So looking at the uh, chart of the testing data, we can see that it was slightly or rather, rather quite different from our training data. So for the training data, if you recall, it was more like a downtrend, whereas for the uh, testing data, initially there was a bit of a downtrend, but then in this part, it was a slight uptrend and then in the end, it just shoot up. So the, the trend was basically very, very different from what we saw in the, uh, during the uh, training period. So what do we make out of uh, this? So that's a big thing. So for the, yeah, the, the, the analysis of the result that we received is that there's a few points that we can improve upon. So three of them are listed here. So first thing is we noticed that the uh, paper doesn't use any uh, volume data, even though we do have volume data. So that's something that we can apply a separate strategy to, uh, to, to, to leverage on to get a better results. And uh, the second thing is obviously what you saw was uh, the main problem, which is uh, our training with more data and uh, data that has a different trend. So because the training data that we use was uh, primarily a downtrend, the, the model was overfitted with uh, a strategy that uh, focused a lot on short selling. So in the end, when we try to apply this uh, same strategy towards uh, a different market trend, we, we didn't perform so well. And the other thing that uh, was not implemented yet was uh, to auto cover short selling. So uh, in, in general, in the, in the market, the, the short selling should be auto covered if it's not close or the, 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 the trade remains open after a few days. But as this was not done, so as, uh, as a result, the, the, the model lo lost money when the uh, market continues to go up. And uh, there was no, unfortunately, there was no buy, uh, buy signal generated from the model to uh, close the, uh, the trades. So with that, uh, I would like to say uh, a big thank you, uh, for obviously, to first of all, to the author of the uh, paper, uh, Xiao Jia Liu, Hao Zhong An, Yu Jin Wang, and Qin Guan. And uh, to, to, to the uh, team that worked with me on this project, uh, Varun, Lakshman, and uh, Mutu. And uh, to NUS as well, my, my school. And uh, to the uh, lecturer, Sam Gu, for his uh, help and inspiration to get us to do this project. So with that, uh, I want to say thank you. And then uh, please connect to me on uh, my LinkedIn. And if you're interested to see the uh, project or there's a Jupyter notebook on GitHub as well, you can please go to my GitHub to uh, take a peek into what we have done there. And uh, if you have any comments or any additional remarks on how or what I can do or questions, please let me know. Thank you. And uh, that's all.